Welcome back to another video. If it is your first time here, my name is Beck. Thank you so much for joining me. As you can tell by the title, today is a lovely ship tour of P&O's Iona. First time we've been on her, but also the first time we've been on P&O as well. So grab yourselves a cuppa because it is a fairly long one. We've just come back from a lovely seven day trip to the Norwegian fjords and she is an absolutely amazing, magnificent ship. Here we go. First, I'm taking you to the Sky Dome. This is set over two decks, Deck 16 and Deck 17. She's been built with colder countries in mind, so it means that even if the sun is not shining, you can still go for a lovely swim in this pool. Deck 16 is where all the action happens. There's food and drinks available. The swimming pool is here, whirlpools, plenty of seating and lounges, and by night, it comes alive and transforms into this amazing entertainment venue. There's singers and aerial artists, there's production shows and laser shows and then deck 17 is the upper level of the Sky Dome and that's where you can get that little bit closer to natural light and you also get great views when the shows are happening with all the spacious seating that you find up here. Also on deck 17 you'll find Sky Bar. This is just one of the 33 bars and restaurants on board the Iona. From here, you can grab a drink before settling down to watch a show, but don't worry, you don't even need to go up to the bar if you don't want to. There will be waiters available for you to order drinks from. Leading out from the Sky Dome on deck 17, you find yourselves on sun deck. There's a whirlpool on either side of the decks, and again, there are so many seating areas. Some of them are undercover and shaded as well, so if you want to get out of the sun, you've got the option to do that. On this deck as well, you'll also find the children's clubs. These are midship. You can tell where you are on the ship, interestingly, by the colour of the artwork that's on the stairwells. So grey is midship, blue is forward and red is aft. Next, we'll go up to deck 18 or panorama deck. There's a giant floor chess set here and access to deck 19 sun terrace, which has got plenty of space and gorgeous views, whether you're at sea or even if you're docked at a beautiful port. So a little bit of useless or useful information, depending on how you want to look at it. These giant white balls that you see on ships are called ray domes. Now in here, it is the radar and the satellite for the ship. Back down to deck 18 and here you've got beachcomber pool and bar. Don't forget to grab your towels on the way in. You will see these towel trolleys placed near every single pool and there's also areas that you can dispose of your towels as well. Now here you've got the option of sun or shade, obviously depending on the weather. And there are not just traditional lounges and seats here, but they've got these gorgeous wooden sunken seating areas as well. And there's six of those just dotted around the pool. And of course, it's not just about the pool. There's obviously a bar here as well. On to another bar now, and this one is an indoor bar. It's got a really luxurious feel. Even on the walk up to it through the corridor, you can just feel how lovely it's going to be. And the Crow's Nest is a huge bar. I used to visit in the mornings when we were going into a port. It was an amazing place to sit. You could find a spot, and the panoramic views in here was just honestly spectacular. That being said, it was also a lovely place to sit. If it was a little bit windy or a little bit chilly up on deck, you could come down here while we were sailing away. The atmosphere was always really lovely. And I think there was a piano playing in the evenings a bit later on, but we didn't get to see that because we'd be in other places partying. <laughs> Wow. 
while I'm up here and it's quiet, I'm going to sneak you in and show you what the toilets are like. Is that weird? Probably. Now, like all public toilets on board, they open with an automatic sensor, not your cruise card, like Jeff first thought. You don't have to put your hand as close as I did, you just have to show it and it will open. Now, these toilets, how lovely are they? I know we're on a ship and I know they're all beautiful, but I just wanted to share. Next, I'm going to take you down to the casino. This is on deck seven, which is parade deck. And here you'll find all the usual things you'll find in a casino, like your slot machines, roulette, blackjack tables. There's screen set all around and they show you what the odds are and they've got various advertising things on there as well. One thing I did notice why we had a little flutter in the casino was that they had a scratch card you could purchase and you could also win a cruise with. I forgot all about it and didn't buy one. Right next to the casino, it actually just flows nicely into it, is Brody's Bar. This is where you can grab a drink and watch your favourite or somebody else's favourite team play in football or take part in a quiz. They've got lots of things going on in here. You'll never struggle with a view to a screen because there are so many dotted around the whole bar. They've also got a pool table for those of you that fancy a challenge or just a bit of fun. Just next to Brodie's and the casino lead into the atrium is the glass house. Now this has a really classy look and apparently a very impressive wine list. It's overlooking the atrium. There's also a tapas menu here but there is a small charge for the items on there. In a quiet corner of the glass house, you will find the cellar door, which offers wine talks, wine tastings and wine pairing dinners. What we did on a couple of occasions was just grab a pre-dinner drink here, sit down, relax and watch the world go by. What better view than this? Except the wake, but I'm coming to that. Down a deck and onto deck six is Anderson's Bar and Library. There's a huge range of books to choose from, so you can relax in a really quiet corner by day. And then by night is also great for grabbing a pre-dinner drink. Here you'll find the first gin distillery at sea where you can buy a bottle to remind you of your lovely cruise. Just a little bit further on along the same corridor is Ocean Studios. Now this is a four screen cinema complex that has screenings throughout the day. They're not massive but they are a really decent size. They've got a great selection of films to choose from. There's even vending machines if you want any snacks or you could just pop to the buffet and grab something from there. I'm taking you up to deck 18 and up here you'll find a jogging track and some activities. Deck games, table tennis, just for an example. There's also the panorama pool and bar at the back of the ship. So absolutely amazing views. Grab a drink here, relax and just take in this gorgeous atmosphere. Just off here you've got the stairs that lead up to deck 19. And that goes up to the sports arena and the golf net. One thing you absolutely do not have to worry about is losing your balls overboard. There's plenty of netting so you don't lose any of them. For the golf there are two enclosures and look at the view that you get to see while you're in there. Okay next is what some of you may have been waiting for. Let's have a look at some of the restaurants this lovely ship has to offer. We're going to be starting with Sindhu which is Indian cuisine with a British twist. There is an extra charge here and the surroundings are really opulent with dark wood and really moody lighting. Next to Sindhu is Ripples and this is Iona's Gelateria, if that's the right way you pronounce it. Here you'll find not just ice cream but they've got lollies, gelato cakes and they even have a gelato afternoon tea. Now this all does come at extra cost as well. Right down the corridor is the Keys. Now this is somewhere that we did spend quite a lot of time in. We had breakfast here a few times, we had lunch here many times and it's the kind of, it was kind of like a food court. There are three places to choose from, hook, line and vinegar and that's a fish and chip shop. Fusion is Asian inspired food and Boardwalk Diner is American Classics. And then just around the corner there were desserts available and then coffee and tea machines as well. 
around that very same corner is the olive grove now there are a few extra charges here but most of the menu is actually included it is a bookable restaurant it's got a mediterranean style and it serves a selection of pizza and pasta but lots more as well what I will say is, if you try and book and you're unsuccessful, try again a different time because people do cancel. That happened to me. And then the following day, we ate here in the conservatory area. It had a really rustic feel to it. The food is really, really good and well worth a visit if you can get in there. Staying on the same deck at the back of the ship is the clubhouse and by day you can find things like bingo and other activities and then by night it really does come alive. They have bands playing here, there's other entertainment comedians, there's a disco on after whatever entertainment has been put on and then from here you can get access to one of my other favourite places. This is Sunset Bar. This is right at the back of the ship. It's such a serene place to be. Have a little listen to this. And a look, obviously. I'm gonna stop talking for a second just so you can fully appreciate the sound of the ocean. This is 100% my absolute favourite place to be on a ship and if Jeff ever loses me, he knows exactly where I'll be. I mean, look at that. It's so tranquil and there's nothing for miles around. I just love it. Okay, back inside and let's go to the atrium on deck six. You'll find Vistas here, or Vistas, however you want to pronounce it. They have Costa's coffee and tea pig's tea. There's also a selection of cakes, but they do have an extra charge on them. We used to call this the airport because it has such massive windows that span over three decks. It's really bright and airy and really amazing place to be to grab a cuppa and just enjoy the sea views, which, as you can see, is a bit of a theme for me. I just love the scenery and the views that we get when we're on a ship. How can you not love that? At the front of this deck is Headliners Theatre and this is where they put on their amazing production shows and in fairness to P&O, it is probably the best ship entertainment I've seen at sea. Ever. Now I'm going to take you and show you some of the amazing shops on board. There are 12 of them all together, from gift shops to jewellery shops to duty-free shops. If you fancy treating yourself or you want to use your onboard credit to spend, this is the place to do it. However, what I would suggest is waiting for the offers because there are bargains to be had. They have regular offers on daily, different ones. Some day they'll have watches, some days they'll have perfume, other days they'll have jewellery. To the good days, here's to the sorrows. If this is a mistake, I know about tomorrow. I don't wanna fight no more, cause I don't feel the need no more, no. Just wanna make it stop. Maybe it's something in the water, or maybe we just hit the end of the road. Right now, it doesn't even matter. It's too late. This made me chuckle, even cheaper than Tesco. There's also the loyalty and future cruise sales if you wanted to book your next holiday at sea before you leave. I do wonder how many people do that, but then at least you wouldn't have the holiday blues if you already had another one to look forward to. Also here is the photo hub and this is where you can view and purchase any pictures that you may have had taken while you're on board. Upper deck on deck eight with great views over the atrium and out to sea is the Keel and Cow. This is one of the restaurants that you do have an extra charge for, but don't worry because there are plenty of restaurants that are included 
if you didn't want to pay that charge and here is one of them this is pearl one of the four main dining rooms on iona this is included in your cruise fare and is at the back of deck six even though some deck plans say it's on deck seven it isn't that is coral this is a really big restaurant with plenty of seating and if you are able to get a window view it's so amazing to just again watch the world go by while enjoying a lovely meal whether you're with friends or whether you've opted to share a table look at those views again coral and pearl both serve breakfast lunch and dinner and then aqua is open for breakfast afternoon tea and dinner and opal is open i think for breakfast and dinner we didn't actually eat in here i just nipped in because i saw that it was open there was not many people around so i thought it was the perfect opportunity to pop in and take a little video just to get an idea of what it did look like of course if you don't fancy the formality of dining in the restaurant the horizon buffet on deck 16 is open from morning until the very early hours it's got plenty of choice of food. It's got coffee and tea and juice available at breakfast time. And then throughout the rest of the day, there's coffee, tea and water available. It's got a lovely, casual, relaxed atmosphere, but it can get really, really busy at peak times. The beach house is right next to it, but it does feel like it's all part of the same thing. The only way you can tell is because the deco is slightly different. They've got driftwood lights and different seats. In the evening, a section of the beach house is taken over and for an extra charge, you can try Caribbean, South American and stateside cuisine. Leading out from the buffet takes you to the back deck where the infinity pool is. There's a splash pool here as well, plenty of seating. They've got some lovely booth type areas where you can watch the sail away or even the sail in. These are great because they're enclosed. So if the weather isn't so great, it doesn't matter. Obviously, because you're on back deck, you have got the most amazing views out to sea. And of course, an all important bar on this deck as well. So you can grab yourself a drink when you are sailing away or sailing into somewhere. This concludes my tour of the Iona. It is the first time that we've sailed with P&O. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help small channels like myself. I have got lots more coming in the P&O iona series so stay tuned for that i'm just going to leave this here the lovely sound of the gorgeous ocean and the pool because the waterfall from the pool above is also making a noise